Hey, today we're going to be talking about why science disproves the flat earth theory. George here at UFC and welcome. So let's get right into it. I've been studying this topic for a little over a year and a half now. It's been very intriguing and the flat earthers actually have quite a good uh, number of good topics that I think is just a, a slight misunderstanding of how the of how the world works. And I'm going to scream through this as fast as I can. Don't take my word for it. Go down below and check it all out. All the evidence for what I'm saying is down below actually reminds me a lot when I was studying through this about a conversation I had with my doctor. So I went to my doctor because I was having some side pains. My appendix had been removed a couple of months before that and I actually thought maybe it was the stitches in there. And I said, you know, is it possible that the stitches that are left in there could be causing me some pain? And in the course of our conversation he said, no, because the appendix has no function. Well, being a creationist, this intrigued me and I said, no, why do you think the appendix has no function? He said, because I've never read a paper that says anything about the function of, a, of an appendix. I said, hmm, that's funny. I've read three papers that said the appendix has a function. Do you often base your conclusions on what you don't know? Just something to think about as we go through this. The first thing I would like to talk about is Inventing the Flat Earth. This is absolutely a fantastic book. This talks about how what I was taught in school as that Christopher Columbus was proving the world was a globe and the church thought it was flat is absolutely a faulty lie. That theory was actually brought in, that concept was brought in in the 1800s to make the church look dumb. It's the God's honest truth. Check this book out. It's fantastic. It, establish, it establishes what I'm telling you completely factually. I don't have time to get into a bunch of detail about it, but please check it out. I want to talk about NASA for a couple of minutes. NASA, NASA, NASA. Everybody says that NASA's fake and that's an absolute evidence because how do you know the world's ground? Show me a picture. Show me a picture of a round earth. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait. On the same note, show me a picture of a flat earth. If you're going to demand that I show you a picture of a round earth, which I will in a second, I'm going to demand that you show me a picture of a flat earth. You're going to quickly say, that can't be done, flat horizon. No, show me a flat earth. If you want me to believe a flat earth, show me a picture of a flat earth. The argument goes both ways, guys. Not just one way, just something to think about. But let's talk about this. I don't think it's reasonable that NASA's fake. It's possible, but it's also possible that this is just my day job and really, I'm Superman. <laughs> but that's not reasonable now, is it? There is 24 people that went to the moon and none of them came out and legitimately confessed to being a fraud. There are some underground stories out there, but I mean legitimately. 400,000 engineers, 800,000 employees never came out and, and whistled and said that it was all fake. How about the Russians? We were in a race with the Russians. They didn't say fraud. No. China and Japan space stations fake? This is a nation that takes honor very, very seriously. The entire world space station is fake or space program is fake? This is not reasonable. We're talking about real people. These are our sisters and our mothers that you're talking about. No. The Bible says that the law of God has been written on all men's hearts. So the general consensus is that people are generally honest and they want to be truthful. And we're talking about millions of people around the world. It's not reasonable. It's possible, but it's not reasonable. Besides the fact that they've actually brought back 800 pounds of moon rock, which is virtually impossible to fake. It would be so expensive to make one little rock that it'd be cheaper to go up and get in and bring it back. And we brought back 800 pounds. Now there was one moon rock that was found that was actually found to be uh, petrified wood. It was in a museum for years and years and years and they found it to be petrified wood. Now come on, any geologist knows that there's a huge difference between what you would expect to see on the moon and what you find in a petrified wood. It would be idiotic to give a piece of petrified wood expecting somebody to believe it was a moon rock. Foolish. You would give something like pumice if you were trying to fool somebody. This is obviously a mistake. But, okay, but I would like to spend a little time on pictures because as the stars go across the sky and you try to take an image of it, the light is so dim that your aperture, your eye, has to be way big in order to, in to get the information. But you also have to take long pictures, 15, sometimes 30 seconds, but you actually get a slit, not a dot. And so they reduce it down and they take a whole bunch of 10 to 15 second pictures and they splice them together, overlap them. This is called editing. Editing doesn't mean fake. And they do the same thing with the blue marbles. The satellite 
By the way, each satellite would be giving different information, therefore the picture would be slightly different. So the satellite actually goes around the Earth and gathers ribbons of information and sends it back to the Earth, and the Earth pieces it together. There's gaps that they have to put together. They remove the, the clouds is the first thing they do. They color in the continents and fill in the gaps. It is a form of art. So each one of those Earths would be different. That's what you would expect. Actually, the police, go and ask any police, if you go and you investigate and you find five witnesses, they better not say identical testimony, otherwise you know they're fake. So the fact that these are different actually demonstrate that Nats, the, the people that were putting these pictures together were doing it authentically. Here's my picture of the round earth taken from raw footage of Apollo 11. I stretched the pictures, um, overlapped them so they were all the same size, and then uh, played them back so that you could see the earth actually curving. This is not possible in 1969. Um, besides, I'm not going to do a... Uh, I'm not going to do a moon landing um, discussion today. I'm not going to get into it, but if you would like me to debunk the debunking of the moon landing, go ahead and leave a comment below and I will do that. So this is my picture. Notice it's edited. It's not fake. There's a big difference. How about the fact that women sometimes even will uh, slim down their waistline a little bit on the computer? Does that mean there's a conspiracy for women? I mean, come on, let's get reasonable. How about the Dutch International Space Station tour? It's over an hour long, no cuts. Well, there's a cut about one minute into it, but after that, there's no cuts. So go check it out. So they tell me if I wasn't told that we were on a round earth, that I wouldn't know that I was on a round earth, and I would actually think that I was on a flat earth. Well, I don't think so. When I look at the moon, I clearly see that it's a sphere with my own telescope. When I look at the sun, I can clearly see that it's a sphere, and we've got Mercury and Venus that orbit around it. I can see Jupiter with its four moons clearly orbiting around it. I can see Saturn with its rings going around it, and the shadow shadow behind uh, Saturn demonstrating that it's clearly a sphere, I don't understand. It would be logical to me to come to the conclusion that we live on a round Earth and the moon is orbiting us. They say the Hubble telescope is, is, is a lie. Well, a member of my church actually invented a telescope. It's a bifocal telescope. It gathers two images and puts them in your eyes so then you can see a three-dimensional sky. It's mind-blowing. He actually worked on the Hubble telescope. So is he part of the conspiracy? Am I supposed to believe that, that he's either brainwashed or he's part of a conspiracy? Why would NASA pay him so much money for f fraudulent work? This doesn't make, it's not reasonable. It's possible, but it's definitely not reasonable. <clears throat> Suspicious observers. The fact is that satellites exist and they really are up there. Suspicious observers is an amazing place. Please go check this guy out. He is awesome. He's actually making an app to predict earthquakes. That's right, predict earthquakes with with a, a 80 to 90 percent accuracy. If if I'm right, I believe that's correct. Go watch a go watch a video by him that's called Watch the Sun Sat by Sat. He does an amazing video that talks about these satellites that surround the sun in the Earth's orbit so they can take three-dimensional pictures. He gathers information from this and predicts earthquakes off of the live information. It's not fraudulent information he's gathering, otherwise he wouldn't be able to make predictions. Suspicious observers, please go check it out. It's amazing stuff. The amateur satellite um, communication. You can actually take an antenna, just type it into the Google or to uh, YouTube, you'll get a whole bunch of them, where you can actually follow a satellite, go across the skyline. It's not there a second ago, and then you can communicate with somebody further than you could before because the satellite's in the sky relaying the information. You can follow it across the sky. Believe me guys, satellites are real. As a matter of fact, for three to eight thousand dollars, you yourself can own your own satellite. A CubeSat or a TubeSat, or even a satellite that's the size of a postage stamp. Believe me guys, satellites are real. The space program is real. You would have to, to push out a truckload of evidence to just hold a handful of questions. They say because we can see flat 360 degrees and that the horizon comes up to our eyes, this demonstrates a flat earth. Well, the fact is that the earth does look flat. I actually did an experiment on the highest hill in the area, about 8,000 feet, and when I was up there, the curve started about 12 to 15 feet away from the camera, and I lifted the camera up about 12 inches, and as you can see, the horizon actually comes up to meet the, 
the level of the camera and it appears that it's flat. I actually took a panorama view of a, of a hill just a little lower, um, about 7,600 feet. Um, and you can clearly see the panoramic actually waved it a little bit, but you can see that it's flat all around me. I couldn't distinguish where the curve was. It looked like that there was a flat horizon all around me and anybody can go up and do this and see this for themselves. But I want to talk about the inferior massage, mirage, the inferior mirage. Light comes and it actually bounces off hot air off the ground, bounces like a mirror, bounces up at your eyes. And sometimes the light rays actually switch, making the object turn upside down. So you see air, which you think is water, sky, and, and that's how an inferior mirage works. A superior mirage works the same way, except for there's a cold layer of air, then a warm layer above it, light bounces off that warm air and bounces back down towards your eyes and you think it's up. So it stretches the object above the, above the horizon. But this isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about looming. Now looming, in physics, it's really neat. There's an experiment that you can do. Um, you can put some sugar in water and actually shine a light through it and it'll bend down towards the thicker part of the sugar water and it will go straight towards the thinner part. So it bends down, which is exactly what we see in our atmosphere. It bends down, bending. This is called looming. So the different things that looming can do is that actually if light comes off the top of a mountain and comes down at your eyes, it can make the mountain look a lot higher than what it is. If you see a ship off on the horizon, it can actually make the ship look like it's floating. Okay, looming here, if you have light coming in and it bounces off, it curves through the atmosphere and it actually, if this light comes to your eye, it makes the object look like it's much higher than what it is, giving the appearance of a flat earth. Now this has actually been demonstrated, you can get looming to half the degree of the curvature of the earth. That means that it's four inches squared per mile with looming. Now I would like you to bring that mathematics and add that into your flat earth concepts. Because when you see a city way off like this one, you can clearly see that you're not actually seeing the whole city, you're just seeing the top parts of the city, which is an which is a decreased curvature of what we would expect. Yes, you're right, we shouldn't see it, but we can only see part of it, which actually demonstrates this, which reveals the science that we already know about the curvature of, of light through the atmosphere. The Earth really is not flat. There's a, here, I left a couple of links to some balloons. There's a balloon that goes up with a non-fisheye lens and a rocket that goes up with a non-fisheye lens. See, the argument is fisheye bends the top and it bends the bottom. Therefore, you can have a flat surface, but it appears to have a curve. This is not a fisheye lens and it's flat on low altitude. And as the altitude gets higher and higher and higher, you can actually see and measure the curve. We absolutely have a curve. I want to talk a second about the perspective issue in the flat earth. They use this as the, as the explanation for perspective. The further away somebody gets on a flat plane, you actually lose sight of their feet, their ankles, their knees, and then their waist. Just on a flat plane. And this is what they say. They say, go down to a football field and do this. Well, I did. I went down to a football field and I, 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 I got these pictures. Well, is what I had to do to get these pictures, I actually had to get behind a curve. So on a football field, it's on a hill. The top's flat and the edges are curved. My camera had to point up this way in order to get this shot. This is a deceiving picture. I challenge you to go down and mimic these pictures and you will see for yourself that this is a bold face lie. Whoever put this diagram together is lying to you. This is me on a track at the same distance. You can clearly see my feet. It takes a lot further away to get, to get away in order to see the curvature. This is just a flat lie, which would mean we would be able to see the sun 24 hours a day, seven days a week. See, in the flat earth model, you got 10,000 miles of distance and 3,000 miles of height to the sun. Now we can reduce this to 130, and if we apply it to yards, at 100 yards a football field, it would be 30 feet off, the, or 30 yards off the ground, and it would be 27.4 centimeters. This big. Are you going to seriously tell me that you're not going to see a basketball at the length of a football field, 30 meters or 30 yards above the ground? Don't forget, it's lit up like a big fireball. You're gonna miss it? 
mm, I don't think you're going to miss it. You're going to see this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The whole earth would be lit up, as a matter of fact. And if you don't believe me, how is the sun going to going to put light on the moon 18,000 miles away, according to the flat earth model, but not reach 18,000 miles down to the ground? It makes no logical sense at all. Not to mention the fact that in the summer, as the, as the sun goes around and the orbit gets smaller in the summer, like the flat earth model says, it would actually get faster. The mass and motion demand that it would get faster. The curvature as it goes through the sky is actually the wrong way. If it was a flat earth, it should be this way. It, the curve should be this way, but it's not. It's the opposite. It curves back towards the equator. I'm in Oregon and that's exactly what we should expect. And it should be smaller in the horizon, bigger over the top of us and smaller in that horizon if the sun, if we're really on a flat earth and and the sun is really that close, but it's not. And again, I demonstrate all of this below. Crepuscular rays. Crepuscular rays, they say, demonstrate a flat earth. They say there's no way that the sun could be 93 million miles away and splay the light out like this. Well, theoretically, I understand what they're saying. And actually, I've demonstrated up here, this light goes through and, and the, the light rays are straight, right where they're supposed to, until you introduce a lens in between the sun and the clouds and the light splay. So the curvature or the uh, lensing of the atmosphere actually causes the splaying. This is again demonstrated by science. I'm not just using logic and reasoning. I'm demonstrating what I'm saying by what we can see, test, and demonstrate. Okay? <gasps> <laughs>